Okay, thank you very much, Marta. So, hello everyone. My name is Kosma Banevich, like Marta said. And I will go with this topic, how to improve our projects from the QA engineer's point of view. This is the official one. A bit on unofficial is how not to lose testers in your project. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, I'm an engineer, QA engineer with over five years of experience. Okay, not this one. Uh, I mainly tested banking and insurance applications. That's why I can only say that I have a specialty in that. I started work here in data art in August 2017, so it's almost it's already two years here. I'm a former esport player. I'm a Star Wars fan. That's why this cutie is called Lord Vader. If one of the ladies here will want to sell you that cat, it means the it is not for sale. Okay, like I said, Lord Vader. Okay, uh, this one is strict because Marta said me to do it. Uh, because some opinion could be a bit harsh for somebody. I just don't want to give, you know, to, to be mean to somebody. I'm just talking about persons which I met, not by the names, not by only just by positions. It can happen in your job that somebody is not working as it has he should. I don't want I don't need it. I'm not needing the everybody that is on this position, so don't be offended about that. Okay, so we'll start with a small introduction. Then we'll go to general ideas, some real life examples that will be the main, main part and very, very short summary on the end. Uh, one more thing, I will ask you a few questions during the, during the presentation. I just hope that maybe somebody will try to answer that. Okay, generally I could summarize the whole speech with that. Uh, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Why? Because I think that the main problem in projects from the QA perspective is, and everybody else, developer, PM, BA, everybody, is communication. If you're lacking communication during your project, during your whole activities, it will mean that the, there will occur other problems. So for me, communication is really important and you have to think about it all the time. How you communicate, how the team communicates, and how it should, 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 should work generally. Okay. Every problem that will occur with the lack of the communication will mean that there will be a problem. Any problem is the loss of the time and loss of the money. Money are the most important thing for, for client, so that's why here is this GIF. Okay, that is a question to you. Who is the most important in the project? Anybody? Sorry? No, not really. <laughs> I'm not that, you know, collaboration project anybody else any other no no it's who oh client that is the that is the best one why because he pays you can do whatever you want if client says that he wants the pink unicorns on the page it's his page yeah you cannot you just you know can say to him nobody will visit that page but i want pink unicorns on the page you can get it so that's from my point of view sometimes you have to remember that client is the most important person and some things cannot be changed. You either will change that, the project or something, client sometimes need, you know, a bit of a push to do it. But sometimes he doesn't change. Okay. I did a bit of research in the, using the beautiful Google and the main problems which were report, repeated in the internet articles there were, first of all, it's hard to maintain good quality consistently over time. Every, every QA, QA engineer knows that, that sometimes pro when you start with a project, you find more and more bugs, then it's harder to find them. It's always complicated. Okay, sec second one. Only one person possesses the whole knowledge and expertise. It's sometimes that you have a team separated and that this guy knows how to test this part of the system. This part of the system is only known by this guy. If you, if you have like situation when you need to test uh, I don't know, payments, you go to one guy. If you want to test the medical checks or something, you go to the second guy, and then there is a problem with it. Hard to make routine interesting and fun. We all know that if you are QA testers, we all know that sometimes testing 20th time the login because we changed the button is quite painful and quite routine, so this is also a hard point. Wrong work distribution assignment. Yeah, it can happen that one team has too much work, second team a bit less and everybody is frustrated. 
The lack of appreciation motivation equals to money, we know that, not always money. And these five, I completely agree with that. But these are the main things that are in, you know, in the internet articles. How to fight with that, how to fight with, with all these five. I will have a bit different approach during the presentation. I will show a bit different things for me, which are hard, and why I, what, what I don't like during my project expertise or project work. Okay, so general problem, once again, communication, communication, for the third time, communication. And yeah, we know that, probably everybody watched this movie. I'm not the only meaning the language. Language barrier always often happens. Sometimes you cannot understand the second person. I had an, uh, I had an uh, example. We were, we were having an ir Irish guy. And sometimes, because he was from Dublin, he was using so difficult speech to understand that even Brit had to tell him to write on the chat what he meant by that. So this is you know, one of the problems. Second of the problem is that he was talking about something else, we understand something else, and it was start of collapse. Okay, and like I said, and the rest. For me, the, all of these things come mostly from that. Okay, we've got 99 problems. Yeah, after a moment we have another one. Okay, once again, communication. Second for me, which is really, really bad, is wrong planning, which comes also from me, in my opinion, from communication. Third one, which is coming from wrong planning, is structure of the team and its abilities. Okay, communication, already told so much about that, so nothing fancy. Let's go to another one. Planning. Everybody, should, because everybody is working in the Scrum, everybody knows that the planning is the key part. Okay, we know that. But planning starts with requirements. If the requirements are understood badly, the bad requirements will be pointed, so bad estimations. Bad estimations lead to the bad time frames, bad time frames lead to the bad team size. So sometimes it happens that we will need that to the next month. Okay, it's good for our team can do it. Tw 20 minutes later, it just comes one small change in the requirements. It's, it's, you know, just a small thing. But they forgot that it's changing the whole process, the whole microservice is going down or up or, or something is changed there. It means that we will need to add, I don't know, two QAs, two backend uh, developers, one frontend developer. So time frames are bad, team size is bad, everything is going off, everybody starts to be stressed. That's what we probably all don't like. Okay, moving on. The A team, it was the ideal, it ideal team in the television. We all know that in real life it happens sometimes that the team is too small, team is too big, Wrong skills are inside the team, and you are the you have five years of experience on the automation, but they want you to test manual the things that you know can be tested by the junior or trainee. Uh, you are not also not fitting uh, with the rest of the team because they have a completely different approach to the uh, how they work. They are probably from different culture. They are working quite differently, and it also happens. That's why I always appreciate a good hire department. Okay, moving on. Who knows that picture and knows why it is so funny? Yeah? Everybody sees that in case of the QAs we know we are the Avengers, we block everything, we are awesome. But it's same for the designers, they all think that they are the Steve Jobs and so on and so on. I always love that because we have to remember that sometimes it happens in life and sometimes the people that are on this, on this, you know, on these places are thinking the same way as it is shown here. And we have to remember that we also sometimes think like that and we have to forget about our pride sometimes. We are not the most important, most important is whole project, most important is client. So sometimes we should a bit change on our mind in, in case of this picture. Okay. This one, sorry, uh, this one is, I will now tell you and switch to the positions that I work with the people and I found during the career on talks with my friends, what they don't like in these positions, yeah? Let's start with the gas ring, the project manager. The first of all, and the, you know, the, the most point from my friends and from me, when it's talking about the bad, bad, uh, bad managers, is when pa project manager is not extinguishing the problems. He's antagonizing people, he's, you know, just telling QAs are more important than 
developers. Developers are more important. Business analytics is the cool guy. I'm the cool guy. And it's, if this starts to happen, communication goes down, everything goes down. So in my opinion, that is one of the worst things that a uh, project manager can do. And I saw the project burn by like that. Natalia could, could say, yeah? <laughs> OK. Uh, escalating problems rather than solving them. Yeah, it is like, if something happens, sometimes it's his job to do it, to solve it. It's not always the guy who is under him that this is the problem. This is for the whole leader's problem, but I'm, I'm adding this point here. Okay, third one, behaving as a client, not as a part of the team. Unfortunately or fortunately, some managers are changing their mindset and they are thinking, you know, they are behaving like the product owner from the side of the client when they are inside the team. And because the scrum is wrongly understood, they are also inside the scrum team. And we all know that if project manager is in the scrum team, that means that it's not a scrum, <laughs> unfortunately. And everything goes down because we are not, we are just working in the scrum. And this is also a big problem when you cannot change something because client wants that, this is the end of the story. And that's why this point is here. Okay, moving on. Business analyst, Mr. Saul Goodman. No clear workload for requirements. What I mean by that? There were some situations when my friend was coming to the kitchen and he was like, damn it, I don't know which requirement is now correct. Because one is in the confluence, second is in Jira, third is in the test case, fourth is in the comment somewhere in the other story. And which one I should choose? All have different dates, all are about the same thing, let's say some icon. Which one I should choose to pat it, yeah? And this goes also for the QA, to, for the QA when he tests that, and this is a, quite a problem. So when, when the business analyst doesn't care about the workflow for the requirements, he's just adding them, not controlling them. This is the worst thing he can do. Not taking into account QA time. Sometimes it is happening that first planning, first requirements are done only by the business analyst. He's talking about the time frames, the team sizes are based on that. And he's not taking into account QA time because he was a former developer or he doesn't care about the QA. He says that it's not needed. And this is quite a big problem because later we have a fight inside the team that you cannot do this and it cannot be passed on or something. So that's why the, this point is here. And third one, always busy. Uh, I don't know which we, if you guys work with this kind of person, but he has the time to talk with the PM, he has the time to talk with the client, but if you ask him the question, he says that isn't the requirements. He will not show you that. I already told you that this, you should know that. It's easy. It's, it's, it's kind of, it, it kind of happened, unfortunately. I mean that if this happens once, it's okay. Everybody, you know, it can be busy, but if it's happening more than once, more than twice, every day, it is really irritating and really, and really getting you angry. Okay, developer. This is what we all love, yeah? Untested task. Guy is adding something, come just git push, git build. We have it, go test that. Nothing worse there. It couldn't work because the code is bad. But yeah, it's done. I have, my job is done. Tomorrow is the sprint end. You just report the bugs, okay? If it happens once, not a problem. If it happens every day, every, every day of the week, this is quite painful. Okay, works for me. I don't know how many times you heard that from the developer. Yeah, I see that you are smiling. Yeah, that, that's the, the best line always. Yeah, it's, it's like, works for me. No, it doesn't work because in the requirements it's like that. Works for me. No, it doesn't. And this is the ping pong. If it's happening, you know, with one guy, you probably, you know, will toss somebody else to that or you will escalate to the QA, guy, QA lead or something. But if that is happening every day with every developer in the project because they learned that they lead also is doing that, you probably will stop to test and you will start to passing that and waiting for, and waiting for the A bomb to blow up when product owner finds out the bugs. It's, sometimes it works and it's quite good. Okay, fixing one plane is destroying other. How many times somebody is saying that he fixed the bug 
and then the bug is coming to you in the other place because he forgot about something or it happens yeah i'm i'm saying i'm not all, i'm not talking that this is you know like happening once or twice it's okay but if it's happening all the time it's painful and it's annoying but please remember we are also a persons which are working working the project and we are also sometimes not the best guys for somebody else so if you will be asking developers why they don't like QAs <laughs> from the QA perspective other QA will test that this is the best part and especially if you have two QAs or three QAs in the team or the Q team is bigger I'll be talking about that a bit later it start to have like okay I can go play the ping pong I can go play the Xbox because this functionality is linked a bit to the second one the second team is doing and maybe they will do it the second QA guy also thinks like that and yeah he probably tested that at the end nothing is tested or something is tested only you know it looks like it's working done unfortunately it happened unfortunately it can bite your ass off later this test case is clear for me many many times many many times it was like you are coming to the project you want to start the project and you are looking at the test case and test case is brought something like this user story test case number one uh, positive test, uh, positive path, uh, one, a date, data something, and there is requirement is good, test passed. It's whole test steps for you. And you are taking this kind of, uh, of the project in the mess. Also, using many, many different names for the same thing, or many, many different, you know, shortcuts, because he knows that. And he forgot that somebody who is, you know, especially this is quite painful in sanity test, why I will tell you a bit later. Third one, I'm the only one who knows how it should work. It happened to, to me, unfortunately, only once. But I work with the guy, unfortunately, who knew better than everybody else, even the product owner. And working with this kind of a guy, when you are raising the bug and he is clearing the bug instead of the project owner, because he said that is in the bug, this really paid off and it was a bit of a fight in case of the retrospective and other stuff like that unfortunately this destroyed the whole team okay moving on this is the bonus point for those who are not the software testers here or quality analysis or quality engineers we have so many names now what are the differences to assure the quality to control the quality sometimes uh, project managers forgot about that and some some people are really you know, really keeping that in the mind that they have a name software tester, they're a quality analyst on their, you know, on their email. And they're only doing this, this part which is, uh, which is there. So sometimes it's worth to remember about <laughs> the nomenclature. Okay. This is question also for you guys. What is the most important part of the project for you? Delivery. Delivery. Okay. Analysis. Somebody else? okay let's do it the gif my favorite one why i say that if if even the analysis is good even if the delivery is good delivery is the end of the process for me the start of the process the start of the process is good you have a good communication with the client you have a good communication in the team everything rest is also will go smoothly if you have also wrong onboarding process team which started is great but after i don't know sometime two of the key developers went down and you have a two other developers coming in and they are not working that good as they because they were not from the beginning in the project it will be a bit of a problem so for me start and by start I mean start of the project also onboarding is the key key to success for me we can disagree we can discuss it a bit later okay one more thing let's let's get ready to the examples i will start them now okay first one will be called the two big team what I mean by that? You probably watched this movie. The guy is always about the ring. We were, we were by the tasks. So what was the issue? The issue was that we have a three QA engineers and three developers. So this worked, but in the other parts of the structure in whole company, but here on the front end, unfortunately, this did not pay off. Uh, we were fighting for the task because all the time there was a question what you are doing today 
and the tasks were sometimes for like, I don't know, 40 minutes because changing the colors, one QA could do that all job. And f like the three guys, we are fighting for the task. We are just, you know, who will we'll just, you know, grabbing or talking to each other. I will just test, take that and test it for a whole day. Then I will test that for a whole day. Painful. Also, really, really uh, frustrating if you cannot work as you would like. How it was addressed after, you know, after one week, two weeks, three sprints of work, how we, how we tried to address that. We proposed to the change of a team size. Uh, generally, they agree. They move one QA, uh, one QA engineer to the other team. And they also suggested that we could help other teams. Unfortunately, other teams had the same problem because the structure of this was in the whole company. And it ended that the complete change in the team's structures at the end. Why? Because I already said in the QA, uh, what can be done wrong by the QAs is that you will not test this thing because you think that second guy tested that. And it happened in the other teams, also in my team. Also, I was a bit lazy after that thing. I found that a bit later. And fortunately, the client changed the whole structure. Unfortunately, they had to uh, move us to the other projects because not enough room for the QA engineers. Okay, second example, lazy QA lead. Uh, yeah, it, it will look like something like that. When you were coming to him, he was, you know, getting up and, oh, I will do it, I will do it. Later, not, not, not really. So, what was the issue? The guy was promoted to the, to the QA lead and he started to lead uh, our two persons uh, team. And he was supposed also to, to be doing the testing stuff. But he was not really interested in that. He was already in the people management. But he was already calculating the team as a third guy and that he will be doing the manual testing. Unfortunately, he was not doing that. So whole job was done by me and the guy who was, who was also hired by, as an automation QA, and he was not interested in manual testing. So whole job was like, okay, you can do it, do it. I found the bug, I came to him if it's a bug because I was, you know, a junior then. I was asking him a questions, and what was funny, uh, on the stand-up, he, he will be saying that he found a bug that I found, and. This was whole job he done in this, in this day. I know, it, if it will happen once, twice, third time, not a problem for me. But if this ha is happening for, like, don't know, two months, and then he's asking for another QA because we cannot do the job because he is not working, it is a bit of a problem. So how do was addressed by a team? First of all, we started with him, talking to him, that maybe he will start to do it, or I don't know, maybe add another person or find something else. Or, Q, or he will be leading in another project and give us a normal QA. So we started with the talks. Nothing changed for something changed for a week. Then it came back to the normal thing, and it ended that he changed the project because he was forced to do that. How it ended? Unfortunately, in another project he also had only two QAs, so that he was terminated on the contract. Fortunately for him, he find a job as a QA lead when he, when he, where he is leading uh, six or seven guys, and he's quite happy with that, because he's good at that, and he was already bored with the normal QA job. For him, it ended quite good, also for us, because we were happy. Everybody was working, everybody is you know, not looking at the other person who is leading them, that he's not doing anything. Okay, next one. Requirements issues. It happens always, why I'm mentioning that? Because the issue was the requirements were provided by a single business analyst and he took for himself only uh, as the only po contact point for the client. Only him can, could be talking to the client, only him he could you know, talk to the product owner, the business analyst, uh, analyst from the client side. And why it was the problem? Because if there's only a single person, he can sometimes understand it a bit differently than you will understand that, or a whole team will be understanding it differently. So he was writing something, and for him it was good. We couldn't, you know, get the idea if it's okay or it's not okay. And at the demo, we found out that it's not what client wanted. How it was addressed? We agreed that whole, the whole team should be present during all talks with the client, or at least one person from all, all the divisions. So. I mean, back-end developer, front-end developer team, and also the QA engineers should be there and ask the questions, try to find out maybe where is the problem, where is the thing. 
So it ended that we no more had the problems uh, with the product and no more questions from the QAs about basic stuff because sometimes, as this guy was, a, uh, I did not mention that, he was also the previous uh, developer. He sometimes put the requirements only for the developer and he forgot that sometimes it should be tested to stable by the QA and he should have a, a bit more information. So that, that's why I'm mentioning it here. Okay, next one. Yeah, yeah, this guy is always looking on this nice thing and surprised it doesn't work. Why? Why he is there? It's because we have another topic which is burning chart is our god. So what was the issue? Burning chart was the only thing that interested the client. Nothing else. We could give him a crap. It could not work. Only chart, only burning chart should be, you know, having this ideal perfect perfect curve yeah if it was like that he was happy he was not asking any questions done good job guys you will having a bonus because everything works like that so how our team addressed that yeah. polls can do it yeah we changed we started to change the change the user stories and tasks you know with the pointing of them we started to add you know tasks for one point one pointer two pointers three pointers instead of eight points of five points. We're dividing everything just to have the points to, you know, address the address the chart. How it ended? I changed the project because I was bored with that on the end. Generally, it was no, not a normal job, not a normal pointing, not a normal work. Because burning the chart is okay, client is paying, we are happy, we can sometimes estimate that, I don't know, two points for changing the font. Yeah, it can happen. Okay, next one. Cleopatra, Scriba, no previous test cases. What was the problem there? Uh, the guy had the three month termination contract and unfortunately he was the only QA in this project left. Two other already left and he was the only one who was staying there. They had a shorter notice period. So me and my friend were tossing this project and the problem was there wasn't a TCS for like half of the project and project was quite big and how it was addressed we said that there is no chance that we will be doing all of the test cases in the time that client wanted them why because client said that okay you are getting the good job but we need the test cases for our for our QAs to internally check how you are checking the things so it was surprise we don't have the test cases it has to be done in the two week period so Fortunately, developers were forced to write in the Zephyr the test cases and how it ended? Client was happy with the test cases. Also, developers started to respect the QA job a bit more when they learned that how it's hard to sometimes change the step in Zephyr and also address that. Happens. Okay, another one. Uh, QA training is not equal to the senior QA. Sometimes this kind of thinking happens in the projects. Not only in in my projects, also in my colleagues' projects, they are changing. They are adding a new guy. He's a QA trainee. We can take you take from you the senior. He will be doing the same job. Yeah, after two week period, he will be doing the same. Who who care? Who care? Okay. So the issue was senior QA to QA trainee in the one week, and we started to fail with uh, with resolving the issues to to getting the things done because uh, unfortunately it was only me left and I was there having like two year experience, so not that much. The guy was completely green, he, he, he was a student and also he was from, from Ireland, so it was also sometimes hard to get in the time to get other stuff and how it was addressed, they added the second QA trainee. It was even funnier because this, this girl was from India and she couldn't work in my time, time zone. And there was a situation when we had a had a thing. I wrote the the tests. She executed them and marked them all as a failed ones. And the question on the daily was, what happened there? Why the why the tests are red? Yeah. We started to look on that, and generally she tested the feature that wasn't even deployed. She didn't know how to look on the deployed stuff, and. After that, we started, uh, generally I had a nice PM, he added me some extra hours, so I tested everything. After one month, they started to help, 
but it was quite painful because you have to write a really, really uh, close test cases, what every point where they should click that, unfortunately. But after two months of the work, they started to be to be helpful. But yeah, this two month period was quite quite painful for everybody, not only for me, but also for developers. Okay, next one. Probably everybody knows this man. This is the original one from Pump People Fiction. I sometimes look like that. I work it in the project where there are 20 boards. You had to check them all to find out what is there. What is there? So what was the issue? Requirements. Requirement for team A is on the board A. Requirement for team B is on the board B. But the problem is that also is a board C, which is, is for the backend developers. And B and AC are connected. And you are testing that in the team D. And team D is also connected to the team E, which is on other microservice. And also you have to remember that somebody else is working on the product for in the team, I don't know, G. And G team also has their own board, own requirements. And to test one simple thing, you have to check five, 20 boards. <sighs> Unfortunately, or fortunately, it was addressed that they started to combine the teams, combine the teams. Uh, we ended with only three, front and back end and uh, microservices. And there were calls for the both teams which are more, most interested in these features. And we started to understand where we can find something. It was taking some time from us, but it was easier and a bit, you know, taking time of a day and also from asking everybody else where I could find it. So it ended that we had the less duplicates on the board and less things to solve and also less situations that were creating chaos because uh, when something was deployed on the server without the thing from the team G, it doesn't work. And after the and deployment sometimes happened like five minutes, you know, they wanted to deploy something in the same time. Well, like always, server did not respond. We have like five minutes, you know, five minute time uh, out of line, out of scope, and it started, you know, to, to break. Okay, one other one. Just test us later. Uh, I don't know how many of you had a situation when there was a situ when it was like PM called and drop everything you have, help the guys from the team A because they're having a problem and hold hands on deck, test everything, there is a problem. Happened. Happened for my colleague and I, I remember when he, when he was almost crying because why? Million of duplicates. And he was the guy which, you know, worked in this original project and had the help. This help was painful for him because he had like 20 million bucks coming to him and all of them were duplicates because they're connected to some issue he already knew, but new guys didn't know. But they had to test because it's like, you have to test this, this stuff. This, this stuff is coming to the client in the next day. So it was addressed quickly that he will be only doing the review for this box from the helpers. And it ended that he had a 20 calls before each bug when they wanted to raise it. So instead of helping him, we created house. We created worst thing that it could be done. Because generally, with our help, we are just destroying his work, unfortunately. So sometimes, uh, sometimes we should remember that it's less is better than few, yeah? Okay. I'm, I'm a really tech support or a babysitter for people, yeah? Why? This is happening for me, like, right, right now. Can you log in? So I'm onboarding to the project, unfortunately. Project is quite uh, quite hard to onboard because there is no guide. The something has changed in the, inside the client structures, and it's hard to get to the to the project. And I'm calling everybody, and from doors to doors, they are sending me to somebody else. Uh, you should probably, you should probably have you know some kind of the badge there, or you have to have this request number, request stuff, or or something else. It is ending that. <laughs> For around two weeks, I'm already still not, you know, in the project. I'm counted, uh, but I'm not. I cannot help my friends because I don't have the access to the machine. Okay, examples are already there, and we have this beautiful unicorn because I would like to say to you what should the ideal onboarding process look for me. First of all, I would like to have the easy onboarding guide. Like PM sends me to to me the guide, and I only you know go by the, open this link add this and this password, you know what to do. 
Second thing, I would like to have a time to play with the app. Sometimes you are getting the project and you're starting straight away. I would like to have a time to do it. Some introduction to the app. Like I already said, sanity tests for me are the most important ones when you are, you know, coming to the project because you can get from the sanity tests how the whole functionality looks like or what application is for, yeah? Because sometimes the guy don't have a, a time for it. Some video will be also useful. Good requirements are for me the key and also communicative team. And up to date zero and confluence, yeah? So we have this beautiful unicorn and sometimes this unicorn looks like that. Why? Because there is no onboarding information, last example. No time to get familiar with the app, so you don't even, you know, cannot look what this app is for, where are the, you know, some points that you can break, how the backend looks, how the frontend looks. Already go to task a task which is, you know, quite complicated and will take you one week to get familiar. No introduction to the app because there are no previous test cases, test cases somehow or they outdated completely. Painful. No requirements or are they outdated ones are also quite nicely because you are testing something and you think that there is a bug. But no, not really. It isn't the bug there because requirement changed and it's already something is on the hold and it should work. That Slack channel, this is my favorite one. They send you to some there to get the help or do you don't have the access to the Git repository or you don't, don't, you don't have the access to the server. Go there and ask the question and after one week somebody will, you know, answer to you that we moved to the channel from the version 7.0 to the 7.1, ask there. You go there and there is also nothing. Happens. Okay, up to date Jira and Confluence, we all know that is the dream of everybody in the project, not only the QAs but also developers. It is always a time to do something else or something else is more important than that. Okay, so expectations and reality, I probab probably this zooms it up, yeah, in one GIF. Okay, I already told bad and good one why we need the good onboarding process in my opinion. Because we are saving time and money in the future. Less calls from me during these two weeks probably means a lot of money in the bank. Saving time to familiarize a person with the project. Also, less calls to somebody who is more experienced because you can find it easily. Third, and third thing also helps the current team with some cases. Why? I often find myself that question from, who's, from somebody who is a newcom newcomer, I cannot, uh, I cannot, you know, give him the answer. Why? Because I tested uh, like five months ago, I'm already on something else. I don't remember exactly what was the requirement and I have to ch chase the user story about the stuff and the user story has a different name or there are 20 similar names in the, in the Jira and you cannot find the exact requirement to say to him, that is in the back, that is how, how they want it. So, in the end, this, this, you know, this piggy is getting bigger, that means that maybe your money will also get bigger because they saved on something. Let's just hope on that. So, a bit to end summary, it's what I would like you to remember from this presentation, not only the gifts, but also the most important thing in every project is communication. Without the communication, everything else goes down. Second one, good onboarding process can help in every project and also in every project good onboarding will help. Third one, respect your teammates. Like we already said and saw that funny, funny picture. And the last one is thank you for your attention. It's already done. Thank you very much.